What's up guys, Big M here. I'm a former British paratrooper and in today's video, we're gonna be reacting to the latest generation of laser weaponry. On our doorstep, it's coming. It's only getting more powerful. It's only getting more deadly. If you like this video, guys, please hit that like and subscribe. It massively helps out this channel. I appreciate you all so far for being here. Let's get into it. Laser weapons coming soon to F-35, F-15, and F-16s. That's right. Laser weapons are coming to these aircraft. What are your thoughts of that, guys? I, I don't know how... Uh, I don't know how I feel about it, but definitely the future is here. Laser weaponry to be used in these aircrafts. On April 23rd, the Air Force Research Laboratory tested a fiber optic laser at the White Sands Test Range in New Mexico that successfully shot down multiple air-launched missiles in flight. The self-protect high-energy laser demonstrator currently exists as a bulky ground-based demonstrator. However, the Air Force is optimistic that self-protect high-energy laser can be shrunk to a small pod that could be tested on an F-15 fighter by this year and eventually integrated into F-16 and F-35 single-engine fighters. Wow. If airborne lasers prove as viable and effective as expected, then future laser weapons could profoundly transform aerial warfare by increasing the survivability of fighters, bombers, and even tankers and transport planes to deadly anti-aircraft missiles. Further down the line, lasers could eventually serve as very fast and precise air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weapons with virtually unlimited magazines. This are That's the point, you know? Like, all that needs to power these, these laser weapon systems is just energy. You don't have to refuel it. You don't have to go and land somewhere, pick up new bombs, new armaments. You just have to power it from the aircraft itself. Very, very frightening thought, but definitely something that was surely going to be made at some point. Now, I have no doubt that other countries will also be doing similar things to this. You know, the this is the future. This is the future. You know, it's becoming more like we've seen in the movies. We're now progressing onto laser and energy-powered weaponry. What are your thoughts on this, guys? Let me know below. Article will look at the strengths, limitations, and implications of aerial laser weapons then look at three aerial laser weapon initiatives currently being pursued by the Pentagon. Laser weapons are growing rapidly in prominence from small arms and tank-mounted laser dazzlers used by China to ground or helicopter-mounted anti-drone and missile lasers tested by the Army and close defense systems on U.S. Navy ships. Lasers possess the advantage of exceptional speed. It's hard to beat the speed of light stealth and precision, as well as extremely low cost per shot and virtually unlimited magazines. However, lasers require a lot of power to remain coherent over long distances, are subject to decreased effectiveness in hazy atmospheric conditions. Yeah, that's a point. It would be limited by atmospherics, wouldn't it? A laser would be limited. It could be, you know, it's just light. It's high powered light, but that could be reflected off moisture you know i know it boasts here about pinpoint accuracy but it's only pinpoint accurate in a clear environment surely but yeah the fact that it's a virtually unlimited unlimited uh, magazine because it still needs power to run it it is much more efficient than and quicker than any like missiles or uh, you know bullets rounds that would and it'd be much more effective and accurate against incoming missiles. You know, you, you, like he said, the narrator said here, not much out there that beats the speed of light. So very interesting. Generate thermal buildup that may require cooling and until recently have required bulky power sources. Self-protect high energy laser is foremost a defensive active protection system designed to destroy or disrupt incoming air to air and surface to air missiles. Currently, long-range missiles like Russia's 48N6 surface-to-air missile or R-37 air-to-air missile can threaten vulnerable support radar and tanker planes from over 200 miles away. 
While fourth and fifth so generation jet fighters only become visible on radar at much shorter ranges, their odds of evading more maneuverable short range missiles are thought to be as low as 20 to 30 percent. Though lasers lack a kinetic pushback effect, even a relatively weak laser could, in theory, quickly and precisely disrupt or destroy the sensitive optical guidance systems of incoming missiles. More powerful lasers could damage missile flight control fins or even thermally trigger warheads. More powerful lasers could also be readily adaptable offensive weapons targeting other aircraft and even surface targets. As lasers could potentially do double duty as sensor systems, these could allow for very rapid engagement times. Of course, effective range and the number of seconds of sustained burn required to achieve destructive effects will be important factors in determining a laser system's effectiveness. Furthermore, a laser can only engage one target at a time and must be mounted in such a way that it can draw a direct line of fire to potential targets. Yeah. Nonetheless, a laser would have virtually unlimited ammunition, would be nearly impossible to dodge, and could be useful for attempting precise, non-lethal or low collateral damage attacks on material and vehicle targets. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, all that's doing is burning a hole through a target. So instead of firing on a missile onto a target with the potential of, you know, a lot of collateral damage, this completely negates that uh, as much as possible, you know. It's obviously just being developed. It's very new what they're doing here with the laser and energy sort of energy powered like weapon systems. As this progresses in the future, this will become a lot more a lot more effective. It will be less power. It would it'll require less power, less power draw. It'd be much smaller modules. It won't be big modules like we just seen in the ships on the defensive positions. It will be way more portable and way more efficient. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the future we everything's like energy powered and everything is, you know, laser as such. It's, it's, it's a quite a, a scary thought, just like the movies, but what are your thoughts below, guys? Let me know. This last point explains why the special operations community is slowly working towards deploying 60 kilowatt lasers on its AC-130J Ghost Rider gunships. Wow. Lasers could significantly increase the survivability of both stealth and non-stealth fighters when operating in denied airspace, forcing enemies to expend more missiles to oversaturate defenses. Energy weapons could also provide a badly needed close layer of defense for deep penetrating stealth bombers like the B-2 Spirit or forthcoming B-21. Currently, the B-2 relies entirely on stealth for survivability and lack defenses against interceptors engaging them within visual range. Similarly, laser turrets installed on transport tanker or support planes could give these large and vulnerable aircraft a much better chance of surviving surprise missile attacks. If lasers are widely adopted, the current paradigm favoring stealth fighters with beyond visual range missiles may change as many more missiles are needed to achieve a high probability of kill. This could incentivize more aggressive engagements, resulting in within visual range dogfights, possibly including laser-based attacks, yeah. which would not be easily outmaneuvered, intercepted, or decoyed. The Air Force's $155 million Self-Protect High Energy Laser Demonstrator Program consists of three components. The Laser Advancements for Next Generation Compact Environments, LANCE, developed by Lockheed and the Air Force Research Laboratory, the Strafe Control System, devised by Northrop Grumman, and the Laser Pod Research and Development Container, under development by Boeing. Instead of using volatile chemicals like earlier lasers, Lance employs fiber optic cables to merge beams of light together to generate beams with tens of kilowatts of power. Its modular design allows power levels to be scaled by removing or adding modules. It is described as especially efficient able to transform 40% of its energy to output. Lance still needs to be ruggedized to survive at high altitudes and speeds and miniaturized to fit in a pod that can prevent thermal buildup from cooking the aircraft and manage the necessary electrical loads. In fact, the latest F-35 Block 4 upgrade program includes upgraded engines that can generate more electricity, likely with direct energy integration in mind. As we progress into the future, as we develop and increase our technology and, and learning more about science, this will definitely become more effective. 
it said there that 40% energy output, that would soon become like 60%, 80%. So it'll require a lot less energy for a much more efficient output, a more deadly output. If you imagine two jets and a dove right now, like how difficult would it be to dodge those lasers? It would be almost impossible. It would be like a, a new generation of armor, a new generation of defense. Um, to, to try and avoid these kind of lasers uh, and, and lasers and energy powered uh, weapon weaponry yeah, systems, you know, it's, it's it's a scary thought. It's a scary thought, but it's coming. It's it's been developed and you, it's on our doorstep. So it's uh it's kind of worrying. In January 2019, the Air Force Research Laboratory also issued a notice for a six-month study called compact high energy laser subsystem engineering assessment, Chelsea, to identify most promising technology options to scale laser power by 2024. The more powerful Chelsea laser may eventually replace self-protect high energy laser demonstrator and would be more suitable for offensive applications. Slides from an Air Force PowerPoint presentation obtained by the drive in 2017 indicate the Air Force would like an internal or conformal laser mount that is one that hugs the airframe without compromising the aerodynamic and radar stealth characteristics for its upcoming sixth generation fighters. It also indicated plans to integrate enough power management capabilities to support weapons with over 100 kilowatt power for anti-air and surface targets. A third program involves the development of a laser armed stealth drone designed to discreetly loiter over a hostile ballistic missile site in order to zap nuclear tipped missiles during the boost phase. So Earlier clever. in 2010, the Air Force successfully tested a modified 747 jumbo jet armed with chemical oxygen iodine laser to shoot down two ballistic missile targets, but the project was subsequently canceled because such an unstealthy plane would not be survivable in hostile airspace. The concept of using oh, yeah. F-35s with directed energy weapons for anti-ballistic missile patrols is also being explored though the idea may be impractical due to the limited loitering ability of the short-range stealth fighter. A stealth drone could address both the need for survivability and long endurance. In the fall of 2018, the Missile Defense Agency handed out contracts ranging from $29 to $37 million to Lockheed Martin, General Atomics, and Boeing to develop a low-powered laser demonstrator. The slow-moving drone must be able to transit 1,900 miles to a target location then orbit the area at up to 63,000 feet high for 36 hours before returning to base. Imagine that capability. Fantastic. It's so lethal. And if it was mounted with this weaponry as well, that could just burn like missile, like missile um, warheads or damage equipment to make it redundant and ineffective. That's game changer. Absolute game changer. It must also have sufficient battery to sustain up to 30 minutes of 140 to 280 kilowatt laser fire. The United States is not in planning for integration of aerial lasers in the 2021s and 2030s. The Franco-German Future Combat Air System, British Tempest Stealth Fighter Programs, and the Russian MiG-41 Interceptor have explicitly claimed in their program materials the conceptual aircraft will be built to support directed energy weapons. Furthermore, the Japanese F-3 and the Typhoon's engines will also include a turbo generator to create and manage additional electricity, quite likely to power directed energy weapons. So it's not just the United States. As we mentioned before, it's not just the United States. Everyone's doing this. Everyone's developing and adapting their technology and their aircrafts to be able to, or what's anticipated, to be able to power energy weapons laser weapons like we've just seen so this is the future of warfare this is what it's going to be it's going to be energy powered laser weaponry it's going to be this this is what we're going to look forward to the next 10 15 20 years this is what we'll be seeing and it's only going to get more deadly it's only going to get more powerful it's only be get only going to be getting more efficient guys let me know your thoughts below what you think of lasers on these incredibly powerful aircrafts on these defensive positions.
Imagine. Imagine. Guys, so there's that laser weaponry. What do you think of the video? If you do like it, guys, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. It massively helps me out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.